So that turns into a lead halide for oxidizing structure when you start baking that on there. Yeah. And then you dissolve some spiral into uh, apparently it's like a thousand dollars a gram. What? Yeah. What? <laughs> Jesus. It's okay. When you start like, trying to make a correlation between CO2 and mores. Yeah, you just drop past that. What? Let the solution. Oh my gosh. Get that oh, that's um, so maybe more relevant questions. Um, um, start discussing more. I'm so like playing. I'm probably not going to actually get some insights at all. But potential oxygen. Yeah, surprisingly What's the maximum? But to be honest, I'm not even more. So whatever. I don't know how many more. It's got to be like less than 25. I mean, I'm not. Probably they're pretty small, so not yeah. much. <laughs> if I get one that works, yeah. right? Yeah, it'll be measurable on the Well, handed out a lot of stuff. Uh, right now, this one is just not working at all. I'm pretty sure that I should have put the aluminum on. Okay. I mean, I'm pretty sure I just short circuited the whole thing. Every single ward in the medieval ages was active. Because they're all either religious or they want more land. I can get if like one country got too much land, they were fought against. And no fair. Um, also, one of my seventh graders came up to me yesterday and said, Yeah, I have a secret. Okay, what is it? Your favorite secret? I don't know. So I have it. You don't disclose. Yeah, the price guy is technically like to die. Well, that's like the that metal thing solution that's available. So I didn't really take this one on long enough or hot enough or whatever. This one kind of doesn't really work. I get a couple millivolts out of it, but no current. This one doesn't work at all. I'm pretty sure I should have put the aluminum onto the clean glass slides and then sandwiched them. Because I'm pretty sure it's short circuit. So I got to start over on this one. Okay. And you, you left the uh, clean terrace in, on both sides mm -hmm. at the side, right? Yeah. And you didn't flip it in the wrong side? Uh -huh. At least I hope not. I think when I was doing it, uh, it started working, more or less working maybe on the fifth attempt. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, if it doesn't work on the second, it, it's, it's okay. <laughs> well, thank you for keeping investing your time into physical chemistry. Um, in case you are watching a recording or in case you were missing a lot of uh, class, it is not yet late to pick up. The, there are three minutes who can compensate almost the whole course or substantial part of it in terms of grades. There is tonight lab, the meeting on coming Friday, and the presentations in one Friday later. So those are most important parts as you make a free advice. If I fail to return to someone who works in the reasonable time, I will just assign the highest grade. So do not, do not worry too much if, if, if I didn't. So uh, it's a little motivation for me to finish that. So the, there will be no class today in a sense of regular class, so no new material. First. Second. I will talk about our research projects from organizational administrative part requirement, how to organize the written reports. And I will present it in upside down fashion. So I will start from assuming that everything is ready, all research is done, and just how to put it together. And then I will develop uh, back uh, to technical videos. What else? So, I may have distributed these handouts half a year ago, 
but if uh, I can distribute it once again, you do not need to return. Okay, if you do not need, just pile them aside. If you want, you can take them with you. It is what uh, was done in the similar class by other students. So the projects do not coincide, but the approaches and style could be very similar. So we do. Um, so in uh, scientific activity, it is what people do every time. Read what others have written, get inspired, and uh, write it over again in about their own systems. So it is not cheating. It is not um, illegal copying. It is getting inspired by works of others and staying on the shoulders of giants. Or maybe not giants, depending on whom, or whose works you are reading. Also, here is a summary of uh, what I will be presenting. So I uh, copied a couple of uh, pages that I like at most for my presentation. Today, it, it finally it is able to record it from camera. See, I was not able to, to do it previously, and now now probably does. Okay, so you are you are there. That's what I say to people that you should look at. <laughs> you should have it zoomed in on the people that shouldn't be looking at. <laughs> okay. Now it is recording of attendance. <laughs> um, if I want another camera, everything works. It's a lucky day today. <clears throat> Do you think we are the first in the humankind history? who write research reports. <laughs> do you think we are the first in the human kind of history to do research presentations? Okay, even less specific, we, we are not the first who are writing <coughs> general reports on arbitrary subject, and we are not the first who do presentations. So it's activity of humans for not centuries, but uh, several millennia. And um, through this long history, there were developments of uh, standard approaches that do not affect the contents of what you're doing. So you, as a creative people, you do whatever you like or do not like in your project, but in a way to perform better scientific communications. And we cannot, maybe unfortunately, to do science just uh, I hide in a cave, do science for myself, develop equations, get happy. It's uh, by the nature of this activity, it's all commun uh, communication for other people, testing if they like or do not like it, if they uh, accept proofs or try to prove it wrong. So there were several thinkers in, uh, in the ancient times who were giving like, instructions, suggestions what to do when you need to do presentations. So uh, uh, one of them is uh, Aristotle from Greek, and he was mostly, I don't have much of education in classics, it's all from Wikipedia, so uh, uh, that you can read yourself. So this Aristotle, uh, he is giving more ideas of how to present 
things in public so that uh, you do your creative work, then you think about how to present them after your research project is done. Then you organize it. It is basically main part in writing reports, so how you put it on, on paper. And then uh, some things, how to do presentations, how to <laughs> change tone. I don't think it is super important, but who knows. And the, there is a thing that is completely obsolete, because we have our electronic gadgets with all things recorded, so we can uh, have zero memory, and we will not suffer from it. Um, so it is too general. And there was another uh, thinker in ancient times who, as, as always, there is a difference between um, Greek and Latin approaches. <laughs> so Greek is more general philosophical and Roman is more practical. So not where to go, but upon the purpose has been determined how to reach it in, in the quickest way. And there was a, a person who was um, giving public speeches for money or for free, I, I don't know, uh, for any cases to convince people to follow uh, some idea. And he summarized so the name of Cicero and the summary of the best talk, in his opinion, is to teach, entertain, and motivate. If any of you have classical education, you may try to read it. Tilectere, tachere, bovere. So uh, making people entertain, uh, give something new that they uh, to satisfy curiosity, and then if you are speaking, it means you want to motivate people to do something. If it is on the court to take this right decision, if it is on the market to buy your product, if it is in a sense to believe that your results are correct. And this uh, thinker left detailed instructions of an ideal manuscript, ideal written report. You will see that the some of the statements are very similar to what we do today, what you were doing in the past, what you will do in the next few days, and some things are, are different. So uh, he suggested to compose the uh, manuscript of six sections. So the um, exordium, which is like very brief, abstract of what you do, then um, <laughs> Narratio, which is like telling what other people are doing and uh, giving general introduction what uh, was done before you. Then a um, summary of what you have done, even before you go to the body of your actual research in our case, or I don't know, lawsuit in uh, other cases. And so he called it uh, the uh, divisio. And then the uh, proof of case, confirmation, which uh, in his splitting of the manuscripts took maybe 10% of the, of the whole story. In the modern science, in tradition of scientific manuscripts, typically, this is the major part. This may, may take like 70% rather than 10. But uh, in uh, ancient times, when people were doing not in a rush, it was not much in actual material, like tables, figures, equations, data, but more explaining who needs it, what is the open problem, and then next to uh, <coughs> discussing. Do I believe that it is correct or not? Or, so uh, um, he called it confutatio. We, we can call it discussion. When a person tries to convince that it is correct, or playing a dirty trick, uh, asking who is against the statement, and then trying to put down this person by all possible means. So, um, <coughs> like, well, I, I'm not telling you to write in the report like you write. Here were my results. Do you believe them? If no, you are stupid. <laughs> 
it's it's how I understand uh, ancient rhetoric. Maybe it was so it was more advanced. And then the peroration, which uh, is conclusion of everything you did before, and then trying to do some uh, energetic statement to induce uh, positive feelings toward the case or, or the client, or um, negative feelings against anyone who doesn't accept this result. Right? <coughs> so you, you, you've got a general idea of what is in, in written report. <laughs> Instructor, do you believe that my work is the best of the best? If no, <laughs> <laughs> So, more practically to what you plan to do. We do less of the discussion, less of the introduction, although any research papers included, just in, in a smaller percent. So, um, you may explain what is the system of your interest, and there was a percentage of your free will choice. So you may explain why you have chosen one or another problem. Um, for this problem, you can explain what is not clear. Like, uh, if you want to research it, it means that for the whole world, or at least for yourself, something was not clear about the system. And you may state your um, open questions. What was not clear? And then, even before, so this idea, came from National Science Foundation. They requested from anyone who wanted money from them. So even before you start any actual scientific research, you may provide hypothetic answer to, to your question. So guess to your best educated, uh, educated guess what could be the answer to this open question. And then uh, you tell, just state that your Approaches to your best belief may support this uh, this uh, answer. Typically, people write it after all results are completed. So it is uh, a, li a little bit not straight, hypocritical. Like oh, I don't know what will be the answer, but um, for those of you who didn't start it doing. Uh, actual calculations, it will be it will be completely true. If you start writing before you, before you do research, and for a reader who read the, the manuscript, it looks in a straight logic. Here's the question. Here's a possible answer, and then you'll try to prove it. Now, methods. <clears throat> if you study the same problem again and again several years, you can skip the methods or just tell read my previous papers. <laughs> but uh, sometimes uh, it is uh, audience doesn't buy it, so you need to provide some minimal details that would help your followers, if any, to reproduce the results. So maybe some people believe that you do congenial work and they just want to do the same. Maybe some engineering people or pharmacy people want to synthesize the same chemical and repeat it. Or maybe some critical reviewer wants to prove that you are wrong and repeat the same experiment in computer simulation or in web. So you need to play fair game and give enough details to reproduce. If it is computational and uh, theoretical simulation, it means you give enough equations for the methods. Results and discussions. So it is what uh, Cicero noticed as uh, Confirm So uh, confirm that your whatever you, you want to prove is, is correct. So you give, in our simplified case, you give figures and tables and basically explain what and why. In the like, figure one shows this because da, da, da. Uh, we do not have much time to do. So basically, if you are in a rush and, and if the length of the manuscript and your time are limited, you just put figures and explain them one by one. Right? If you are so productive, which can be the case, that you have generated more figures that, than you can fit in a short report, and you do not feel comfortable to leave them away, there are two ways. If it is a true scientific paper, you, you provide electronic supporting information and you put all garbage that is not 
good enough for um, main paper. Here we will, in these examples, you do not see supporting information section. So you either delete it or compose multi panel figures panel A, panel B, panel C. But it is only in the case if you suddenly realize that you generated too much data. Uh, for most of us, in the limited time, it should be not the case. And what to write in conclusions? Refer back to the question and hypothetical answer. And write, oh, what a surprise! My initial hypothesis was proved. <laughs> it is a great discovery. <laughs> right? So it's a standard step, but when uh, a reviewer reads it, it looks much easier and much logical to read. So you uh, you may be boring and read. We did this, we found this, and maybe it is interesting. But if you uh, loop it logically, it will read much uh, easier, much um, more pleasant. And again, based on Cicero, you want to convince reader or viewer or editor that it is valuable and trustable. So what impact you work? So if you, whatever you design a dress or design a catalyst for whatever, catalytic converter, without my work, all cars will still stop. <coughs> without my work, people will not live long enough. Or without this equation, we all become ignorant. <laughs> I'm exaggerating. Conclusions with, with impact. So I've done this general, no, not done. Impact. This is completely challenge. You, your intellectual development is hundred times above this figure. <laughs> <laughs> but as long as you develop in your educational path, no matter what it will be your next uh, fork in branching, like industry, education, research, you are in, in with your development you become more and more specialized in some area of knowledge. And your knowledge in some areas depart from the pool of common sense in a, in a good way. And if you want to convince someone who is not from your uh, team that you are doing something valuable, you need to roll back and explain what you are doing in a simple language and convert it in the uh, very clear explanation who needs it. So, I hate this activity, but I just learned that it, it, it has to be done all the time. So, if you are doing research and you want to pull money from government who pulls money from uh, taxpayers, you need to convince that you are not just satisfying your own curiosity, but doing something useful for, for the society. In main, in most cases, it is truly so, even if you do not realize it. But in some cases, not. But Anyway, you need to come to provide arguments. So, standard way, immediate way, after you're doing publications, there are people in maybe engineering departments who uh, scroll through, design devices based on your materials or protocols or new chemicals, synthetic protocols. Patent, get the benefits of uh, bringing it more to uh, closer to production cycle and then it goes to industry and gives like if you do solar panels you provide everyone with free almost free energy if you do uh, electronics you help everyone to have cell phones um, and there are similar tracks for drugs and uh, I don't know, security or some other applications another path how the like if nothing of this applies but you really want to Complete your research and convince readers that you're doing something valuable with. through this curricular activity, through this research. There is a development of next generation of scientists and teachers who, through education, will serve citizens or through generational workforce, will enter industry. So it is a last resort if you do not find other arguments. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, 
maybe if your uh, plans of professional activity is in, in this area, you think that it is the first thing, right? <laughs> but uh, it, it is very adequate, correct, and normal to mention it, even in the short uh, reports. Yeah, discussion is natural part. So th this thing is already distributed. So practically, how do we organize research? And I'm too wordy here. It is excessive information. In fact, what you do is simpler and quicker. So uh, I want you to believe that this part is done by now. So uh, before doing research, you, you plan it a little bit. So you select potentials which we spent like two weeks to vote and design for those who were attending evening sessions. And then um, there is a concept of activation energy, which is very, very general for majority of <coughs> reactions. If a chemical is stable, it means it will not decompose spontaneously, which means to decompose it or to launch a reaction, one needs to provide energy, for example, by heating. And this activation energy in the potential, you can just estimate it as a from uh, initial to, to the maximal barrier will be your estimate of energy. Uh, and then you can set up initial conditions, at least for wave packet, which should be localized in a part of the potential that corresponds to reactor. And then you are done to start. Assuming that you have uh, debugged the code and you are sure that it works. So the code is not the goal. The code is instrument. Uh, I will, if something is not working, I will try as much as I can to help. So your actual research starts after this slide. So there will be, after this, two more slides, but they will be more on logically <coughs> connecting and preparing for presentation and for report. This is the only slide about the actual research, about practical work. So, an actual work is only this step, or maybe this three steps. This is also sort of preparation. So, make sure that you have to, to assess the yield of reaction in a single run, and the rate of reaction in a single run. So for the uh, yield of reaction, you can glance through this uh, printouts. You just uh, integrate left part of the cell, right part of the cell, and probability there at a given time will be reacted and probably. Okay. And if you measure probability that wave packet converted to the product 100% by the end of your simulation cycle, then it is 100% yield reaction. In these approximations, in this simulation, the rate can be computed in two ways. One, if you just do derivative of uh, product formation probability over time, it will be ready. But this one will be very noisy and it will depend on time. Another one is to try to fit your dependence of product, product formation to uh, linear, uh, to, linear, to the exponential. And this is easy. Even if you do not have it, it is maybe five minutes uh, exercise. So, actual research, only these three points. Before, in everything we did in class, we didn't speak out the word temperature. Because it is not statistics, it is not thermodynamics, um, but even if you do not pronounce the word temperature, temperature does exist. <laughs> So for, uh, you cannot uh, <laughs> decline it, its presence. Which means that whatever objects we deal with, they have non-zero kinetic energy and non-zero momentum. So for our, in a very, very rough approximation, we can assume that um, the reactant, the reaction coordinate, or whatever, maybe electron, um, the system, has non-zero momentum that we can model by assigning P0 in, in the code for the wave, uh, Gaussian wave packet. 
Of course, if you want to be very rigorous, you need to do ensemble average where this P node is directed to left, right, and uh, some other directions in multi dimension. You have a sample over uh, random uh, directions of the momentum. But as a very rough approximation, just moving towards barrier with different values of momentum is already qualitatively correct approach. This will work and give reasonable results that you would enjoy. So you, uh, you do set up the initial value of, of momentum. Run your code once. Record, maybe not for the paper initially, only for yourself. The uh, product formation trajectory, the rate and yield. Enjoy. And then record it. And then uh, select another value of initial momentum and repeat. How do you select initial values of, uh, of momentum? And um, what is our hypothesis that we want to prove right or wrong? Some of you have, may have already designed serious scientific questions. What I'm providing is a little learning curve question, but it is interesting to check. It will work in one case and will, or not, no, will work not in, in, in another. So the momentum that we set up in the wave packet determines kinetic energy. And if this kinetic energy is equal or higher than your estimate of activation energy, Reaction should go completely, 100%. If it is less, it shouldn't go at all. Right? So this is the statement that we can prove right or wrong. Of course, it will not be 100% fulfilled. For example, if it is, uh, if the barrier is not only high, but wide, preventing tunnel, it will change the, the, the difference. If you're, um, if you, including electric field, you, you need to add some uh, additional thinking. This would work much better for heavy nucleus and molecules. For electron, this uh, thing sometimes works, sometimes not. So it's interesting to check. But from this generalized question, from this generalized uh, problem, you may select such values of momentum that range in the vicinity of, of your estimate of activation energy. So starting no temperature, no activation, uh, no kinetic energy, and then twice as much compared to activation energy. So that you explore all ranges being lower and being higher. And um, some of you may decide, oh, I want to optimize my effort. I'll do a cycle when the computer will range for all values from zero to two. I run it once, relax, and then collect data. It, it's correct, it's practical, but nothing works from the first time. So it's better to do just change value, run, record. Change value, run, record. It's not very intellectual, but the benefit of such um, obsolete approach is that you may tweak the step size. You, if you see that you change it by so much, so much, and nothing changes, you can next step doing making it larger. Okay. And also, energy is square of momentum. So you need to, uh, the momentum needs, if you want to equally space points in energy, the, uh, the values of momentum should be spaced as square root of, of this energy. So repeat and record. Uh, I will return here, but let me show in here, yes. So you may arrange a table and record value of momentum, kinetic energy, unit of reaction, rate of transfer. Just fill the table. As soon as you fill the table, your research is kind of done. The rest are technical details. So like running the code about 10 times, recording the data is very much sufficient for successful com completion of the research. The rest is convincing your readers that you are right, and preparing colorful figures to, to make it easy to, easier to read compared to boring text. Table. So turning back. OK. So 
So upon collection of data, you start analyzing, which uh, is, again, your creative free choice. For some systems, one point of analysis is more important. For another, is another. So you can verbally analyze whether uh, you see what you expect. That there is no reaction in kinetic energy than less, and it is 100% if it is higher. If, if you run the code even humble 10 times, it will be a huge amount of graphical information. You cannot show all of it in four pages of your report. So you select most representative example of either wave packet shape or <coughs> population as function of time. So even in this small learning project, we uh, hit the big data problem. You cannot, uh, human cannot look and analyze and communicate to other humans too much information. We need to summarize and condense what you find. So representative examples and verbal explanation. Well, if you want to make connection to real life, you may convert it from atomic, your results uh, from atomic units to something more uh, useful, like inverse nanoseconds or time of reaction in nanoseconds. Or, um, if you do differential rate, you may see that reaction rate changes in time. Also, I would answer that this question C4 has a trivial answer that kinetic total energy shouldn't change. But if you are coming from region with uh, different potential, there is a conversion of uh, kinetic to potential, potential to convert uh, kinetic, and you may see increase or decrease of the overall kinetic energy. And if you see overall increase of kinetic energy, it means that your system is heating up. It is a combustion reaction with release of heat. So even this small code that you're practicing may give you answers on such uh, ambitious uh, questions. Um, philosophically, yes. Practically, no. Uh, we do not have, I will not discuss in much details. It is just to launch your imagination. But if you take classical, Harmonic oscillator, prepare it, let it move. After some time, it will return into exactly initial condition, initial state. <coughs> Is it possible that quantum state evolve, evolve, and then return into the initial state? Um, if you have nothing to do with my answer, but maybe you will be too, too busy for to analyze it. Approximations. We are not doing exact science. Exact calculations and exact exact computation, exact calculation is not possible. Any calculation has a lot of approximations. It's uh, uh, any theoretical approach is an art of browsing in the space of approximations. You cannot take into account all degrees of freedom, all particles. You always reduce your system, and you may tell what you what you did neglect. And then you can share your again everything. You have. Too much to be monitored. You may say how nice this method is, or how bad it is, and how you would like to improve it. If if you if you would get that chance. This is something that we will do in a week from now, next uh, Wednesday, in preparation of the oral presentations. So taking one or a few representative. Dynamics pictures, converting them into uh, YouTube uh, movies, uploading and sending uh, the link to this YouTube. Why you see in this uh, um, booklets that uh, for such of readers who will see it electronically on the first page with uh, contents, um, it is much easier to just watch the movie than to uh, read the whole composition. Right? And then in the very, very uh, last part of summary, you can tell um, your experience whether, what is the impact. So you can 
share your vision of impact on the society, on industry, pharmacy, and maybe to your own um, pleasure or opposite. It didn't teach me scientific com computation. It has nothing impact on research strategy. It doesn't help my industry career, and it will not help me to become a teacher. Well, I hope opposite. So here is the graphical summary of what we, we discussed. So you select a model, which means you choose a potential okay, with the rest of the, of the code that has been provided. And then you go two paths, and then you, you compare them. So simplest path is just you look on the potential, identify the value of activation energy, and it will be your reference point. Another path, you select momentum, run dynamics, compute rate, repeat, again, again, and then from analysis of the data of these potentials. There is an equation that you may have seen in the chemistry 151 or whatever you like, freshman chemistry, or if, if you didn't, we'll cover it. It's a way how to convert table of values of temperature and values of constant uh, reaction rate into activation energy. So it is uh, one of the standard uh, ways to summarize data in, in chemistry. It's uh, Arrhenius, Arrhenius plot. And from, from here, we will estimate the activation energy and compare it with the reference point. Program maximum. Even if you don't get to this, do not, do not find it. It is a wish list. What else? Again, a little extensive list of possible figures. Four pages would not fit seven figures. I, I, I know. <laughs> so you can either skip some of them or fit them into multi-panel. It's just a general idea because uh, sometimes um, input is helpful. Maybe schematic ex explanation of what is your system. You can sketch it or take from Wikipedia, or if there is an atomistic modeling, take some uh, chem draw. Potential and uh, initial wave packet, which will help a reader to read. This is very optional. If you have potential, you can always find its eigenstates and plot them. Same thing as we did for box, oscillator, like energy. I can stay. Last thing, um, most likely no one of us will have time. Examples of typical dynamics. It is what, what I've told. We run it for 10 times, but we can show only one in figure. Otherwise, it will pop up too, too much minutes. Population as function of time. Again, one example. And then rate of uh, reaction as function of either momentum or kinetic energy or temperature or inverse temperature or both. Um, as a looking forward, I'm giving a hint that if you plot it as logarithm of rate versus inverse temperature, it would be most uh, representative. The, the picture would look not a, in a strange way, but uh, in if it is a well-defined system, it will be a linear dependence. And there are, I wouldn't say theorem, it wasn't proven, but practically it works for very many cases. Okay, then. So, um, I hope to see you tonight at five. But you can do it at, at home with your laptops if you have any stuff. What I do care about, please write four pages reports and bring them next time in class. Please print three copies. Okay. And sometimes I do not pay attention to details, and I imagine myself in your place. <laughs> <laughs> okay, meeting is done. Um, I, I will stay here in case there are some uh, questions.
Did you hear about the uh, abstract algebra test? Yeah, average is 55. Yeah. <laughs> you got a freaking 93. Yeah. About to uh, hear about how disappointed the point is the entire class. Right. Did you look the entire class? You got a 90? 93. Yeah. But the uh, the average and the median are both. But is he really disappointed in the entire class? Not the entire class. Most of it. 